بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Hi everyone uh, Welcome again in the Adai Academy Zoom meetings after one month of absence because of some uh, uh, some uh, uh, social and some family uh, businesses so but we, we cannot we cannot uh, uh, wait away uh, um, for a long time away from the knowledge away from the scientific activities because it's the sacred of our lives it's like the oxygen for the the, the human beings uh, I'm, I'm talking about um, the uh, regarding the science and the, the education uh, and the knowledge for for us uh, the other academy uh, zoom meeting is conducting the uh, the knowledge the old subjects about the refractive surgery uh, and uh, as well the the as well as the cataract surgery including the old matters related to the anterior segment surgeons uh, but the 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 most loved part of this is the cornea the 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 very strange tissue with a very strange and unexpected behavior especially in the in the subject of cryocornus so there is a new information uh, every day about the diagnostic tools and the, the algorithms related to the uh, the diagnostic uh, 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 parameters of the cryocornus uh, either the uh, primary primary cryotegia which is the cryocornus or the post lasik tegia uh, as well so we have today the most honorable and most lovely one to me, uh, the, uh, my dear friend, Dr. Yasser Rifai from Rebat, Morocco. Uh, he is a very eminent and very professional surgeon in this field, the field of the anterior segment, especially the, uh, the uh, refractive surgery and the cryotocorus. And I know from him, from my conversations all the time with him that he has a very precious and very rich knowledge about the cryptoconus diagnosis and uh, management. So today we will squeeze him to, to, to have all his experiences in this field. But we, we, uh, we have to, to know first that we are thinking today beyond the pentacamp. I think all of us today, me, uh, should, should have the, the old information related to the pentacam, how to diagnose the uh, corners from uh, the pentacam. But let's think beyond the pentacam uh, regarding the surface of the cornea and regarding the core and the behavior of the corneal uh, properties. Uh, so I, I may ask uh, Dr. Yasser Rifai to start his presentation about the uh, epithelial mapping and the role of the epithelial mapping in detection of cryoconus and exclusion of the misdiagnosed cases as cryoconic cases. Uh, you are welcome Dr. Yasser in this meeting uh, and uh, I may ask you to start your presentation. Assalamu uh, alaikum bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you very much uh, Professor Hussam Ziada uh, for this uh, valuable invitation. Uh, I, I, I will try to be uh, clear about this, uh, this subject, about uh, uh, epithelial mapping, and try to, uh, to, uh, to, make, uh, to emphasize about the importance of this uh, exploration in, uh, in the exploration of the cornea. So uh, I will uh, start my presentation. I will share my screen. <coughs> Until you share your screen, Dr. Yasser, please. Uh, well, to, to, yeah, uh, for, uh, as a reminder, uh, we, we have uh, we have to, to lose your paper or your poster about the axial length, okay. a rule in, in okay. the of the intracranial ring. <clears throat> okay, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Do you see my screen? Yes. So I will uh, start about uh, epithelial mapping. Um, so epithelial mapping is a huge development in corneal imaging. Uh, uh, as we know before, 
the, we, we thought that the epithelium is homogeneous. And now we, we know that the epithelium is not homogeneous. Uh, when we have an irregular stroma, it leads to irregular epithelium. And uh, the epithelium will, will try to fill the gaps and try to make the surface of the cornea uh, smooth. The epithelium hides some of the uh, surface aberrations of stroma. Uh, the epithelium will thin in the peaks of the cone and thicken around the, the peak to uh, give the, the donut image that we have in character cones. We will uh, uh, see more details about uh, this, this, uh, uh, the, the behavior of the epithelium. This is the theory of uh, Dan, uh, Dan Reinstein who uh, is working uh, on epithelium uh, from uh, 30 years before and he uh, since 30 years before and uh, uh, he made this uh, uh, this uh, draws so this one shows a normal cornea with a normal and regular epithelium and uh, when we have a keratoconus we see here that we have a protrusion of the stroma but uh, the, the epithelium will change his thickness to try to, uh, to hide the, this protrusion. But he, here we have, um, we have a developed keratoconus, advanced keratoconus, and we can see the, the protrusion also in the anterior surface. But we have these two cases that uh, uh, shows that the importance of epithelium mapping. In this case, you have an early keratoconus with a protrusion of the stroma, but the anterior surface is normal. So if you make a tomography or a topography, an anterior surface, a topography of the anterior surface, you will find a normal uh, anterior surface. And uh, it is misleading because it is not a normal cornea. Why? Because the epithelium will try to hide the, this irregularity. In this case, you have an irregular uh, anterior surface. It means that you have an abnormal uh, anterior surface on topography, but the reality is th there is no keratoconus because, because it is only a uh, 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 hyperplasia of epithelium and that we call now a pseudo keratoconus. So when we have, uh, 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 when we have uh, an advanced case of keratoconus topography or tomography, uh, can show us the dia uh, can give us a diagnosis, but when we have an early keratoconus, sometimes we can have uh, false negatives in this case, or we can have a false positive like this case. This uh, this shows the the behavior of the epithelium. Uh, so we have you have you see here the 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 keratoconus, and you have the thinning of the epithelium here, and you have the thickening of the epithelium around. This is another case with uh, a stromal scar and you have an irregularity in the stroma, uh, but it is hidden by the effect of the epithelium. And I, uh, I can compare the effect of the epithelium like accommodation in hyperopia. Uh, uh, I mean, when you, uh, you measure refraction in a hyperop uh, uh, child, you can have zero refraction, but when you put the cycloplegy, you, will, you can find plus four or plus five. This is the same. When you do a topography or a tomography, you can find a normal uh, uh, surface, but when you do the epithelial mapping, it will show you the reality of the stroma. This is a, a semiology of normal epithelium. Uh, uh, it is uh, regular, a uh, little bit asymmetric because you have the effect of the eyelid, the superior eyelid. Uh, you can have a, a temporal, uh, 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 nas nasal uh, inferior uh, thinning, uh, uh, thickening here. The difference between superior and inferior is uh, uh, about five microns. This uh, examination with OCT uh, measures the epithelium plus tear film. This is different from the Artemis that was studied by uh, Dan Reinstein. Dan Reinstein used the Artemis, which is an ultrasonic uh, device, and uh, it measures only the epithelium. 
OCT will measure the epithelium plus the tear film. That's why this examination is sensitive to, clear, uh, to, to contact lens wearing, to dry eye, to uh, surface, uh, ocular surface diseases. Uh, abnormal epithelium is an irregular epithelium. It is in keratoconus, it will give a, a donut image with a thinning in the center and a thickening around. You can see here, here in three dimensions. In this case, you have a thinning here and you have a thickening here. Why? Because the cone is located here and to try to uh, uh, make the surface of the cornea uh, smooth, so the epithelium will, will uh, have a behavior of a contact lens uh, that will uh, try to, to, uh, to, to hide all this, uh, the, the high order aberrations. So you have a thickening in this side and thinning in the peak of the cone. You have the same image here. And uh, with the, the epithelial mapping, you can uh, make the diagnosis of keratoconus and you can locate the cone. Uh, this is a, a case of a false positive. Uh, you have here a topography with uh, an inferior steepening, but the inferior side of the, of the epithelial mapping is thick. It means that in this area, the, the steepening of the cornea is due only to this uh, to, to this thickening of the epithelium. But you should uh, correlate this map to other maps, to elevations, and uh, also to a slit lamp examination and uh, OCT, sec OCT section, because uh, you will have some false positive or false negative when you have some scars in the stroma. When you have a scar, you will have this, uh, this, uh, this image and you will have this the thinning of the epithelium because it will have a filling uh, effect in a small area. So the epithelial mapping will not be reliable when you have a scar. Epithelial mapping is reliable. You can rely on it only when the stroma is clear. So when you have a haze, a scar, you have this uh, hyperplasia, this filling uh, uh, effect, and you cannot uh, uh, give a diagnosis or rely on these images. So you have to, to, to couple the, the epithelial mapping to the slit lab examination and to uh, uh, OCT uh, scans, uh, high definition, to look for haze or uh, scars. This is another case with scar here. So in epithelial mapping, we analyze thinning area, thickening, the average thickness, the shape of the epithelium. And we can see here that the, the cone is located in this area. And uh, we can see the difference between the thinnest point and the thickest point that can give us the, the idea about the progression of the keratoconus. And we, we, have, uh, uh, we, we have to, uh, to correlate always epithelial mapping to slit lamp examination, high definition OCT scans, curvature maps, and elevation. All these parameters should be correlated to have a, a good uh, uh, an, uh, analyze of epithelial mapping. This, this is a case of uh, intracornea ring with uh, uh, you have here uh, a thinning over the ring and a thickening around it. So the, this, this, uh, this uh, picture explains the, 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 the late results of intracornea uh, rings uh, uh, after the remodeling of the, uh, the, the epithelium. So let's comp compare uh, the, the epithelial mapping with posterior elevation. So until now, uh, the, the, post, the uh, um, uh, corneal tomography 
give us a, gave us a tool uh, more than a topography, which is the posterior surface. And we uh, uh, we look now uh, uh, we look to, to the posterior surface uh, uh, in the beginning in, in the the first image that we see in the topography is uh, the posterior uh, elevation. But I will show you that the epithelial mapping can give more information about the uh, posterior elevation. So we, we will see some cases uh, uh, where the, the tomography by the Pentacam will give us a borderline case and we will uh, uh, have the diagnosis uh, uh, with the epithelial mapping. Case number one. So you have in this uh, tomography by Pentacam, you have some irregularity in the anterior surface, but the posterior elevation is, uh, is normal. So in this case, you can, you can tell that it is a, a normal cornea uh, with a little bit of irregularity, maybe due to, uh, uh, to uh, rubbing or to uh, anterior surface disturbance or uh, tear film disturbance. The Bila Ambrosio display showed uh, a normal anterior and, uh, and posterior elevations. So when we see this uh, pentacam, we can say that it is a normal or borderline case. We have here a hot spot, but elevation is normal. When we make the epithelial mapping in the same case, we find this donut image in this inferior area. So this is a, a, a highly uh, suspect keratoconus uh, with epithelial mapping. And now we know that it, that the, uh, it is a keratoconus because the fellow eye is a keratoconic eye. So we know that keratoconus is not an unilateral, unilateral uh, uh, disease. Uh, but in uh, Pentacam, the, 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 the feeling effect and the, the effect of the remodeling of the epithelium can hide the keratoconus when it is early. So in this case, we have one eye which is uh, confirmed keratoconus by Pentacam, and the other, in the other eye, it is uh, borderline, but we know with the epithelium mapping that, it is, uh, that we have a real keratoconus in this case. Case number two, we have here uh, small irregularities. We have uh, posterior elevation in uh, normal values with uh, uh, 11 or 12. Uh, so here in this case, we have small irregularities with normal uh, posterior elevation. We have some hot spot here, but we cannot be sure that it is a keratoconus. Posterior elevation is normal in the Bela Ambrosio display, but the epithelial mapping shows in this steep area that there is a thinning in this area. And the fellow eye of the same patient is a confirmed keratoconus. So it is not a unilateral keratoconus, but it is a bilateral keratoconus, but early in the left eye, detected only with the epithelial mapping. Case number three, we have this irregularity. Uh, we have normal posterior elevation with normal thickness. Normal posterior elevation with uh, uh, anterior and posterior elevation with uh, Bela Ambrosio display. But in the steep area, you have a thinning. You have a, a, a thinning in this area that confirm that it is there is a keratoconus. Case number four, we have this small irregularity, but the posterior elevation is still normal. Bela Ombrosio display showed normal, uh, normal uh, uh, maps. It is borderline case in tomography, but you have a thinning effect in the, uh, uh, the epithelial mapping that confirmed that it is there is a keratoconus. This is very helpful in refractive surgery when you, uh, uh, you, you screen about very, very early cases of keratoconus. And this 
uh, maybe explain the, the cases of corneal ectasia after normal uh, uh, tomographies. So we, we know that epithelium is not homogeneous. Uh, irregular epithelium uh, uh, means irregular stroma. In this case, you have small irregularity on the anterior surface, but it is confirmed that there is uh, a keratoconus with only epithelial mapping without looking to the posterior elevation. So this uh, uh, presentation showed that you, you need to confirm keratoconus only the anterior surface and epithelial mapping to confirm the diagnosis. So here we have normal posterior elevation, but the epithelial mapping showed shows the, 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 the keratoconus. Uh, why the posterior elevation can be normal or, and Bela Ambrosio, the display can be normal in early keratoconus? Because when uh, the, the sphere, the, the, the reference, sphere reference uh, in very early cases of keratoconus is very uh, uh, near to the surface, to the studied surface. So the values can be very low and you will have normal, uh, 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 normal values. And uh, when you have the Bela Ambrosio display, when we have in a very early ca uh, case of keratoconus, even the values will be uh, normal. But the, epithel the, the epithelium uh, will try to, to, to hide the irregularity of the anterior stroma, and uh, you will see uh, uh, small irregular irregularities in the, the epithelium that will show you the keratoconus before the posterior elevation. So at a con as, as a conclusion, I conclude that the epithelial mapping is uh, uh, more valuable that, than uh, posterior elevation in the diagnosis of the, uh, the, the, the very early keratoconus. And we can say that epithelium is now the new posterior surface for keratoconus screening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Yes, for this great presentation and a great topic. Me, uh, I think it, it, ha it has to change the, the minds about the diagnosis of keratoconus because um, uh, all of us may, may follow the, the, the base or the rule that the uh, posterior changes will happen first before the anterior changes in, in the pentacam, right? Yes, yes. Okay, but, but actually, uh, as you have shown in your presentation, the, uh, the epithelial mapping could detect a, a central island or paracentral island of epithelial thinning uh, at the same time, normal corneal back a normal pin and ambrosio display, which, which, uh, which could be uh, considered as uh, an, a, a, an early clue for the early cones. So the epithelial mapping should be put, but it may need some, some uh, studies or wider studies to prove that uh, to, to be followed as a rule, the epithelial mapping could be a key for detection of the early cases. Uh, which which uh, which could be detected in both eyes, not not in the other eye, and in a patient with a confirmed keratoconus in in the filo eye, because actually the advanced eye, it was with a keratoconus suspect months uh, few months ago or one year ago or or some many years ago. So uh, the, the epithelial mapping is very crucial and a very important tool to be present. Actually, it's not popular in, uh, in my country, um, but we are, but we are gonna uh, search uh, um, uh, to, to, to find the, 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 the way for this uh, magic machine, magic device, the MS-39, to, to, to have this map, this, this very, detailed and accurate mapping of the epithelium by the OCT. But uh, let, let, uh, let uh, me asking, ask you about the epithelial mapping. 
you, you have to ignore the peripheral changes. You will be, um, you, you will be uh, um, uh, committed to the central three or, or from three to six millimeters, I think. Beyond this area, the, the thinning or the thickening could be insignificant. Uh, so I I, uh, I focus on the the steepest area. Uh, I I take the tangential map, yes. and I go to the steepest area on the tangential map, and I will check the same point with uh, uh, the epithelial mapping but with the tangential map. But if there is no steepest or a hot point in the topography, if there is no hot point, and uh, I, when I have epithelial mapping. I will consider the, the, the thinning significant when I found it in this area, I think. Yes. You may agree with me. Central six millimeters, because you, you, you have mentioned that the peripheral thinning may be caused by the eyelid pressure or the pulling of tears. Actually, the cornea is thicker in the periphery than the center. So we, we, if I if I found the thinning in the periphery, it could be related to other factor or artifacts in the images. Yes. Exactly. But the central six millimeter, it will be the 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 uh, the zone of studying the epithelial uh, behavior. Okay, but actually the epithelial mapping um, may, may be mistaken in diagnosis in the early cases, or should be or should be thinned at the start. The protrusion of the anterior surface of the anterior stroma on the woman's layer and the anterior stroma. The protrusion of this part of the cornea could be accompanied first before thinning by thickening or by pushing the epithelium. Do you think so? so? Uh, when, when we have a protrusion, when we have a protrusion of, of the anterior stroma, yes. where uh, the epithelium will uh, always uh, try to to hide this protrusion when even when it is very very early uh, uh, when we, when we have uh, an keratoconus with unilateral cases of keratoconus with pentacam i always always find in the fellow eye a thinning yeah in all cases okay with with no uh, with no Bowman's layer uh, key max uh, increased key max or with with no back changes exactly with normal with normal pentacam with uh, yeah. with normal image okay so the back of the cornea or the back elevations of the cornea may may be going to yes uh, to the the abnormal limits it may start from plus five uh, for example plus five and going to plus ten but still in the normal range but it's going to be uh, 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 a ectatic cornea Yes. So the epithelium will, will detect the changes by its behavior, but its unique behavior. Um, okay, but uh, be, because you are an expert in the, uh, in the cornea uh, or the anterior segment, uh, and also you, you, I know that you are studying the epithelium for a long time, uh, especially uh, after start or after the beginning of uh, with range time. But Reinstein um, uh, was studying from 30 years or 13 years. 13 years. 30, 30. 30. 30. 30. Since, since he was a resident. Yeah, okay. Uh, fantastic. 30 years he was studying up till now. And he's till now studying and, and giving us a new theories about the epithelial magnitude. Uh, so normally in the normal cornea, the, the, and the upper half of the cornea or the lower half, which one is thicker than the? Uh, the, 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 lower, the, the lower half. Yeah, is, is, is always thicker. thicker than the it, upper half. The, the lower half is always thicker, but sometimes you have in the peripheral side, you can have a thinning uh, uh, in the peripheral side because of the inferior eyelid. Yes. When, when we take in the six millimeters, yeah. you have the, in, the inferior side is a little bit uh, thicker than the superior side, but you, you, you should have normal uh, anterior surface uh, uh, tear film. When you have a disturbance in the tear film, when you have dry eye, it will uh, uh, give some, uh, some irregularities. 
yeah, it's it's very important point. So I'm asking you about it because the normal tear fill. How to know that that, that this patient has a normal uh, tear fill, uh, or what what's your precautions or preparation uh, items before oh, capturing uh, the. We, we have in the same device, we have a, a tear film analyzer. And yeah. we, we, do, we do the epithelial mapping. And uh, when there is irregularities, we do the, uh, the tear film analyzer. And we see if there is an irregularity uh, of the tear film or not. It's an, it's an automatic. It's, automatic. In, it's, in, it's, it's another, another, uh, another, another usage of, of the device. Another option or another, another option. It's Ooh. another option. But okay. we, when we have an irregularity and do, uh, we think about uh, uh, abnormal tear film, we do it with the same device and we, we know if it is regular or not irregular. Yeah, you mean that you, when you have an irregular irregularity? Exactly. You, you will check it first by the yeah. advisor before printing, before taking the decision. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, perfect. Um, so, because the lower half is thicker, is always thicker than the upper half, so the thinning, thinning of the of the inferior part of the cornea could be abnormal. Or should, sorry, should be abnormal and should be uh, should lead you to think about this cornea. Um, the other important point, the exclusion of the cornea, but the epithelial mapping itself. When you find a thickening above an elevated part in the topography. When, when you find a, pa a patient with an inferior steepening and you are not sure about the occurrence in this patient, uh, I, have, I noticed that you shown a, a slide, some slides about this point, which is so important too, to exclude when you find a red, uh, a red color or, the, uh, or thickening. The red color means thickening in the theory mapping by the MS39. So the thickening means exclusion. This is related to some scarring, uh, and not related to the ectasia itself, right? Yes. When we have the, the thickening of the epithelium, you have to check if the cornea is clear. Because when you have any scar, the, this thickening is due to only to filling effect. Uh, so we, we cannot rely on this map if we have a haze or, uh, or scar. We, we should look to the cornea by the sleep lamp with the height, with the... Uh, uh, Scleritic uh, scatter, which is a lateral illumination. Exactly. Yeah, with or with the, the high definition uh, uh, scans of OCT to, yeah. to look uh, to uh, any, any scars. Yeah, okay. After you, Dr. Yasser, I, I found many corneas with irregular surface, but actually it's not matching. Uh, there, 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 um, uh, these corneas were not matching with the conus indices in the old features or the other indices or surfaces. Uh, and uh, and um, actually, I took uh, uh, some brave decision to, to do a LASIK surgery in such patients. And when I lifted the flap, which is the very thin flap I'm using to, to do a thin, thinner flap, I found a multiple scars, multiple but not pigmented scars. It is, it is a rig, it's some some hollows in the anterior stroma, which may lead to this false elevation in the anterior surface and also maybe in the posterior surface too. Yes. Uh, but actually, I, I couldn't detect it by the state lamp, maybe related to the, um, the limited uh, capabilities of the state lamp by the, uh, it's not high definition, uh, on the high, not high resolution images. So the epithelial mapping tool will will be very helpful in this point. So we have to conclude today that the epithelial webbing has a dual action to exclude and to diagnose at the same time. Exactly. Uh, uh, what about the sensitivity in your opinion, specificity and the sensitivity of this tool in the diagnosis and exclusion from uh, your work? I, I, it, I think it's very high. I cannot give you a, a, a value because I'm I'm uh, working on it. Yeah. Okay. You know, <laughs> it, it it is very high, very high, and we will have uh, the results, I think, uh, in few months. <laughs> okay. We know that there is some problem in the in the internet between Morocco and Egypt, so the information needed for the studying 
<laughs> I don't know why. We are hoping to find all data to complete the, uh, the, the study and the statistics of this study, to find the specificity and sensitivity of this, of this tool for diagnosis. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, I know that you have um, do some work about the, uh, the, cross, the patients before and after epithelial removal, before cross-linking in the cross-coronary patients. Well, what, uh, what did you find in, uh, about the, uh, the, 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 the Bowman's Chemax, the Bowman's layer um, a cratometry before and after the removal in cratoconic patient. I'm, 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 I'm saying the, the, the title uh, as a complete title, cratoconic patient. And I know that Dr. Yasser have uh, done uh, uh, trials on many cases about this very crucial point before and after epithelial removal, removal, what about the chemex? The, the chemex is very, very, uh, it's higher when, we, when you remove the epithelium. Yeah, fantastic, yeah. You can find five, six, seven diopters. So uh, uh, when I do uh, uh, AP off cross-linking, so I, when I remove the epithelium, I redo the tomography with the topography with the MS39, and I check the, with uh, MS39 and, uh, and Pentacam, and in all cases, we, uh, I found that, uh, that the K-max and all uh, keratometries of the anterior surface are uh, very high after the removal of the epithelium. It means that the epithelium uh, uh, plays the role to uh, reduce the, the, the keratometries of the uh, keratoconic corneas. The epithelium has a masking effect. Exactly. Yeah, it is a scientific, uh, or uh, sorry, it is the academic uh, name. The masking effect on the chemax. Actually, uh, we have to expect that the chemax, I mean, you, uh, if you remove the epithelium, you will find that the chemax is more, is much more than the re reported by the pentacam or the, by the topographers. Uh, so it's very important in the diagnosis, sorry, in the follow up of the keratoconic patient. So to judge if this patient is progressing or not, is, uh, the pentacam is no more. Um, uh, accurate in this point. Exactly, yeah. because uh, the, the epithelium can can play the, the, the this 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 effect uh, to mask the irregularities. So uh, uh, we we can find uh, uh, stable Kmax, but the Bowman's layer is uh, the the the, the Kmax or the steepening of the Bowman layer is 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 getting higher. Yeah. But it is masked by the epithelium. That's why the Kmax is not really the good, uh, the good tool to, to, to monitor the progression of the keratoconus. And also the, 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 the pachymetry, the total pachymetry of the cornea, uh, uh, when you have a, a masking effect of the epithelium, so it, it gives false information. So when we follow keratoconus, the progression of the keratoconus only with Kmax and the total corneal uh, uh, thickness, we, uh, I think that we will miss some cases of progression. Uh, uh, actually, uh, it's 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 the, the truth about this point. Um, we, we we may the epithelium like this when the the cone protrudes, the epithelium go goes in thinning, so it will mask the the actual cone or the protrusion of the of the cone. So we may think that this patient is not progressing, but actually it is. Yes. Uh, especially in, in, um, in the, uh, sus the, the more uh, susceptible patients like the females in the childbearing periods uh, and so. Uh, the second question, uh, what's, about, what's the effect of pregnancy on the epithelial uh, mapping or epithelial behavior? Do you think there's um, an effect? I didn't study it. I didn't do a study of, uh, of uh, epithelium in pregnancy, in normal cases and keratoconus cases. Maybe it will be a next step in, the, in, my, in my works, uh, but I cannot give you uh, information about uh, pregnancy and epithelium. Okay, let's, let's put it now in, the, in our calendar. 
to start studying uh, studying the behavior of the epithelium in pregnancy and and put it and put beside the contact lens effect too. What about the coordinate warp, which it is a must to to uh, to care in all patients with uh, contact lens or not? Because it's still a controversial point. There is a coordinate warp which in all patients with contact lens, uh, the contact lens readers, uh, all of them should should have the the uh, epithelial changes or the surface changes or not. Uh, some surgeons may ask the patients to uh, to to off. To, to remove the contact lens with one week, two weeks, or just two days, three days, or even one day in some uh, surgeons. Uh, there is no fixed rule and fixed time for that. So the epithelial mapping by this device may help us, I think. Yes. I, I found I have uh, some cases, but it is not a study. Uh, uh, after uh, more than one month, and we have the warpage. Even more than one month. One month of uh, yeah. Of yeah. removal of the of removal of the contact lens. Yes. Copy With the contact lens. Uh, but but after that, did you follow this patient after that? No. I didn't. I I I, I should uh, I should do another work about about the contact lens. Because uh, this this means, this might uh, might not be a warpage. Maybe uh, an inferior steepening, a real steepening of this cooling. Yes. Uh, uh, inferior steepening with the, with a, a, a very high thickening of the inferior side of the of the epithelium, and uh, you, you 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 may find it uh, even uh, one uh, one month and a half or two months after the removal of uh, of the uh, the contact lens. So uh, I cannot give you a scientific uh, uh, data. Because I didn't work on a large, uh, large uh, population, yes. but uh, it is in the calendar. Okay, but uh, uh, to finish this point, there is a relation between the coolness and the, the hormonal changes in the body, especially the the uh, the hormones related to the uh, uh, the, the uh, fluid retaining the edema of the of the tissues. Especially the uh, thyroid hormones. S some bodies uh, think that the hyperthyroidism may be associated or may be a cause for the coolness or the hypothyroidism. Uh, I, I know that there is some of the of the coolness experts around the world uh, stated that there is a relation between the hypothyroidism and the coolness. But actually, I, you, and you may agree with me in this point that the hypothyroidism may increase the progression of the cryoconus and, and, and I think it's not a cause for the cryoconus itself because hypothyroidism may be an acquired disease. It's not a collagen uh, uh, disorder. So I, I have found a lot of cases with the retinoid pigmentosa with the cryoconus. So, a retinoid pigmentosa is a relative contraindication for coronary refractive surgeries. Uh, but actually, I found a lot of cases with correct coronaries and a lot of cases without. And actually, one, 10 years ago, I have done a case with a retinoid pigmentosa. I have done a LASIK surgery uh, for this patient with, with retinoid pigmentosa. There was no coronaries in, 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 in his image, and up till now, he's okay. Uh, so, do you think that the hypothyroidism? Is related to the coronus, maybe an association with it or not? Uh, in my practice, I didn't feel, I didn't feel it. Uh, I see maybe um, between five and ten keratoconus per day. I don't feel that there is there is a correlation between these two diseases. Okay, but but Morocco, uh, 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 the the is very common in Moroccan patients, in Moroccan persons. Yes, we have a, a very high rate in, in yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. And it is very aggressive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and and may not may, may be another factor that you are the most famous cornea surgeon, cornea <laughs> specialist and consultant in Morocco. So the all patients from everywhere is coming to you. Right. <laughs> 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 uh, so I may um, 
I may invite um, uh, our professor, Professor Hosni Hassan. He is with us today in, 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 in all our, our meetings, and he is a reference of all of us. And, and I think Dr. Hosni Hassan will have an answer for this question. The, the, uh, the relation between the cryoconus and the thyroid disorders, the autoimmune hyperthyroidism, and the hypothyroidism too. Dr. Husni, I hope you are with us now. Dr. Husni, yes, Elazi. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Sir. It is related not to hypo or hypothyroidism. It is yes. related to thyroid eye disease. And uh, the cause, mainly there are some enzymes in the tear film in these cases. That is the, uh, the, the explanation. But I need from uh, our guest, Dr. Yasser, welcome in Egypt and welcome even but by photo. What is the picture in both? Contact lens, garbage syndrome, and will you see marginal degeneration? Uh, do you hear? Yes, yes. Can marginal you degeneration, what is the picture? And also in contact lens or image syndrome. What, what is the picture in, the, in both cases? Dr. Hosni is asking you to find pictures for the coronal warpage. Yes, the yes, and will you see marginal degeneration? Yeah, and, and, and below said marginal degeneration? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. In, in, Thank in you. Okay. Hosni, before, leaving, have... before leaving, before leaving, uh, Dr. Hosni, are, uh, are you still with us? Yes, yes. Uh, Dr. To answer your, your question. Uh, for the policy uh, margin degenerations, uh, uh, I have I have not uh, an image here, but in uh, uh, you have a, a thinning in the steepest area. It's like keratoconus. It is uh, a little bit peripheral, but you have a, a, a thinning in the, in the steep. Yes. Thinning? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. But, but, but you, you may find a photo and send, send it yes. to, to, to me. Okay. And I will uh, 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 share it. Uh, also, okay. for the corner of Warbridge, too, uh, uh, we have discussed it now to study. Okay. Dr. Dr. Hosni, please, again, your, your answer about because it's a common question about the relation between the thyroid eye disease and the cryoconus. It's related to the autoimmune issue. Run by Dr. Masli. Yes, yes. You hear me? Yes. Ah, there is a research done by Dr. Masli Alexandria in relation with the thyroid and the cryoconus. Yes. And the both the explanation only from the tear film. There are some enzymes that can affect the stromal collagenase and the collagen fibers. Yeah. And, both, uh, and he suggests that every case of thyroid eye disease must be searched as a keratoconic case. Thyroid eye disease, whether hyperactivity or yes, hyperactivity? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, it's not related to the hormones itself. Yeah. But related to the tear film in tear film uh, enzymes, yeah. Some, some abnormal substances in the yes. tear it causes thinning uh, of the collagen fibers of the cornea. Yeah, okay. Either acquired or in, in the old age or the young, in the young age, it's not different? In the young age and old age, yeah. Especially in young age. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, our professor. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, we, 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 we may invite Dr. Uh, Ahmed al-Masri himself uh, for, uh, for presenting his study about this, this crucial point, which is a commonly asked, uh, and uh, it's important for all of us. Uh, thank you, sir, very much. Dr. Yasser, again? Yes. Uh, we, we have finished now the uh, epithelial mapping uh, as, as a general outlines about this uh, uh, subject, uh, please can you can we have a, 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 an information about the uh, the role of the axial length? Uh, you, you have a work about that, and 
I know that uh, it's accepted in the Estras, right? Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. And all, uh, all the best for you. All the time. Thank you. So uh, let, let us know about it. Okay. So I will uh, speak about uh, some clues in... Uh, I I will try to open yeah. this. Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. I will. I will allow you. Yeah, I, I I have allowed you now. Okay. One second. Mm -hmm. Our topic about the axial length measurement. Intraconic. Rings. of the intraconeal ring segment implantation in the, in the cortical cone. Share my... Ah. So, uh, we are... Uh, uh, can, you, can you see my screen? Yes, now we... we yes, I know. Uh, I see it now. So I, I, will, I will speak uh, in general about intraconeal rings and I will emphasize about the uh, excellent. Uh, so I, this is the mechanism of the uh, of uh, of uh, intraconeal rings that it will make uh, a steep uh, uh, area in the periphery and uh, uh, to to make the the cornea flatter in the center. This is the mechanism. So uh, do you do you want to to speak about all the the indications of the intraconeal rings or only the axial lens? Uh, excuse me, we 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 are. Um... Uh, we already need to, to know all about it, but actually because of the sick of time. Okay, I will I will go to yeah. the. Let me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I hope that I have it here. Ah. this is uh, about. So when when you when you want to calculate the intraconeal ring. Uh, it is a way to treat to treat high order abrasions in uh, in a cornea. Uh, it's like uh, when you do a, a wave front guided PRK, you treat the high order aberrations. It means coma and uh, trifold and other uh, aberrations. It's the same way when you when you use the rings to treat keratoconus, you uh, you 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 focus on the high order aberrations. Uh, uh, coma and high spherical aberrations. So sometimes you have when you do refraction, uh, you uh, you you can you can you can have uh, some high myops uh, minus seven minus eight with a high cylinder, and you don't know if this uh, uh, this myopia is coming from the cornea, the irregularity of the cornea, or the the uh, it's an actual uh, myopia. So when, when, when the, the, the myopia is coming, it's uh, from the cornea, it is a false myopia. Uh, we know that the refraction in keratoconus is, is false uh, uh, because there are some, uh, some high order aberrations that can uh, 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 give false ametropia. Uh, so in this case, I found that the uh, axial lens is a very, very, very good tool to, uh, 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 to distinguish between the uh, the real uh, myopia and the false myopia. Some some cases you have uh, keratoconus on a high myop eye, or an an hypermetrop eye, or an emetrop eye. And uh, when you have a uh, uh, keratoconus in a high myop eye, uh, you you with the uh, cornea rings you try only to regularize the cornea and then treat. The, the, uh, the, the high myopia with a natural uh, like uh, fakic IOS. So uh, the action lens will give the, the uh, evaluation of the, 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 the myopia or the spherical aberration. Uh, so the, the defocus evaluation in, in, in keratoconus is very difficult and you cannot use uh, cycloplegia. So you have fluctuation and accommodation and eye position, and it is difficult to say in a keratoconic eye uh, uh, if it is myopic or not. So you cannot treat uh, uh, an, an eye with an uh, uh, axial length of 30 mill millimeters like an eye with uh, 
uh, 20 uh, millimeters. So the goal of the uh, axial lens is to avoid hyperflattening of the cornea in high axial myops with uh, a very uh, small optical zone. When we treat with five millimeters, you, you will uh, flatten the cornea in very optical zone that will lead to a bad quality vision. Uh, and you can have some prediction uh, uh, of refraction after the intracornear ring segment implantation. And uh, you can differentiate between high myopia and high spherical aberration using uh, uh, axial lens and other, uh, you have other tools like uh, the Q value, which is very important, uh, and the, the K readings and others. So uh, th I think this, this, uh, this uh, draws will show you that the, the importance of the axial lens and you cannot treat uh, a central cone with a high myop like uh, a central cone with uh, a metrop eye and uh, uh, defocus and uh, 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 a decentered cone in uh, emetrop cases uh, like uh, uh, a decentered cone in high myop uh, eye. I have some examples. You have here a refraction of minus 12 minus two cylinder. Uh, in this uh, two cases, you have this refraction. And if you follow the nomogram, you will have the same rings in the both of cases. So do you think that we can treat this two keratoconus with the same ring? When you measure the axial lens in this, this case, you will find an emetropic eye. So it means that the aberrations in this case are uh, high spherical aberration. But in the other case, the axial lens is 26. So it is, uh, the aberrations here are axial myopia with coma. So you cannot treat with the same plan. Here it's a good plan because a circular ring will treat the high spherical aberration. But here, this circular ring will not treat myopia and will not treat the coma. So the management in these two cases, here you have a circular ring, but here you will put a, a small segment here to regularize the cornea, then you will put a phycic IOL to treat the high myopia. So I th the, the, this was uh, an example. I have another example here uh, with uncorrected vision uh, 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 0.1. The best corrected vision is uh, 0.3 with minus nine. So with, with this refraction, we will have these rings, these two rings. Is it a good plan? No, because you will not treat the, uh, you, you, you will flatten this area of the cornea, which is already flat, and you will not treat the coma because the difference between the thickness of the two rings is not uh, uh, very high. So the, the actual lens here is uh, a little bit high. So you will calculate another time and you will put only one ring to treat the coma and then you can regularize the cornea. And if you have more, uh, uh, more uh, 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 myopia, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, 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 only uh, uh, myopia, not uh, high spherical aberration, you can treat it with uh, uh, soft contact lens or with fake IOI. So I, I, this, the presentation is very long, but this is the summary of the, 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 my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Esser, again for your wonderful presentation and the ideas. Uh, it's very, it's very uh, guiding uh, um, idea or thinking about the choice of the, of the intercorner ring segments about related to the exome length, the refraction, which is false or true. Actually, we, we, uh, this, is, this, this uh, idea may explain when, why um, we may have a different results with a different corneas with the same ring segments. Actually, you may find a patient with very low uh, unaided and best corrected visual acuity before the intracorneal ring 
And surprisingly, this patient may see well, and very well after the, the, the REM segment, uh, and you will be very happy and encouraged to, to do it again and again, and, but you may be stopped when you find a patient with no good results with the same plan or with the same brain segments. Uh, I, I remember that I am uh, from, from five or six years ago, I did an implant, one brain segment, one, one brain small, one small brain segment in a cornea. Either to put two ring segments, 160, and an opposing 90, or or 210, or uh, or 320, especially in the myopic corneas, or these very steep corneas, to achieve a good correction by the flattening of the cornea, but very very variable results with all patients. Yes. So you are you are explaining that today by, by, by uh, with with your idea, uh, but actually, the the question here, the the brain segment, the the longer one or the the high, with the higher circumference with the higher diameter, like the my ring, for example. It um, it seems to be correcting the 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 myopic patient, whether the the, the, it's a real myopia by the high, uh, by the by the long axial length, or by the steep cornea itself. So again, give us just one clue to differentiate between both patients. I, I know that you have shown the, this in your presentation, but your conclusion, ju just in in uh, from your clinical experience, when you have a patient, yes. I, mean, I, ha I had a patient three weeks ago with minus 10 sphere and minus nine cylinder. Minus 10 sphere, minus, 10, minus nine cylinder. Yeah, actually the, the classes or, or the correction, the unaided visual acuity for this young lady was 360 by, with a correction of minus seven sphere and minus five cylinder, he could see six 24. Mm -hmm. So I plan for the intracorneal ring segment before going for the ICL to correct the cornea as much as I can to correct the astigmatism. Uh, but actually, I, 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 I plan to put or to implant 320. 20, yes. Yeah, arc length. Yes. Uh, regarding the thickness of the track, I bought 300 microns thickness. And this patient, surprisingly, she, 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 uh, she could see, in the last visit, the one week ago, she could see 624 unaided. But the correction is still minus six sphere and minus two cylinder, which is very strange. How come to find this? The same, <clears throat> there is no uh, a big flattening or significant flattening to correct the sphere, but there is a high, very high correction of the astigmatism with a good vision for the patient. Uh, yeah, okay, your I have, comment? I, I, I have the explanation for this case. Yeah. This case, uh, uh, he couldn't see this, uh, this visual acu acuity if the actual lens is very high. So I, I'm sure that your case have a normal uh, actual lens. And the refraction that you find, this minus 10, minus 9, it's a false refraction. I never see, I never look to the refraction ticket. I do only, only the, the, the subjective refraction. Because in a keratoconus, the, the autorefractometer uh, uh, become uh, crazy. He cannot take the refraction. All this, all, uh, uh, the, the man, this, this minus nine is not a cylinder. It's not uh, 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 an astigmatism. It is uh, a false interpretation of high spheric, of, of uh, high order aberrations. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the autorefractometer is, 
is a very um, elementary, elementary uh, abirometer that uh, inter have uh, uh, false interpretations of high, or high order aberrations. So I do not look to the refraction. This minus 10 or minus, minus nine, it's, you cannot have a minus uh, six refraction uh, with uh, uh, more than, than uh, one, uh, uh, 0 0.1 uh, uh, visual acuity. So the explanation is you, 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 we should not look to the ticket, the refraction tickets in keratoconus cases before or after implantation of offerings. Okay, but actually, if you follow the nomogram, which is not uh, 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 myself, I don't follow the nomogram. Uh, I, I'm just following my own nomogram from the clinical experience. Uh, but uh, the nomogram stated that the visual acuity less than 660 don't, don't, don't implant intracorneal ring signals, right? Yes. But most patients with advanced keratoconus and with very good thickness and promising coordinates for the intracorneal ring segments, uh, 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 they, they are do doing well with, with, with the ring segments. So the visual act is not a matter. I think the cornea itself, the corneal parameters, especially the corneal back, not the, the cone itself, uh, uh, do you agree with me at this point? Yes. I, 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 don't, I don't follow the nomogram uh, like you. And uh, this, uh, the, the, the problem of the nomogram, uh, the nomogram in, uh, give importance to refraction, to low order aberrations. And it does not give importance to high order aberrations. So when you do refraction in a keratoconus, it is false. It is, you can do the refraction by yourself three days and you will find three refractions or four or five refractions so you cannot rely on this to have a plan i uh, rather uh, see the 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 shape of the cornea i see the q value the q value is very important when you have a very high q value minus 1.5 it means that you have a nipple cone and you have it when you have a nipple cone, you cannot implant an ICL or 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 you should you should flatten the, the cornea. But when you have a Q value uh, normal in the normal range, it means uh, uh, minus minus 0 0.5 or 0 0.6, you should try a soft contact lens. And if the vision uh, uh, go better, you can you can implant a, a, a fake IOL. So the main problem in this case will be only low order aberrations. So I give a, a, a real importance to Q value, to the shape of the cornea, and I do not uh, give a, a, a big importance to refraction because I know that refraction is, is, is false. And my ref refraction now is the actual lens. Uh, when, when, I, when I have a mine uh, 26 millimeters, I know that the refraction in a normal eye will be minus, about minus nine. So this is the, the, the calculation. Yes, yes. Uh, great, thank you. But what's the, cut, the cutting of point of the posterior elevations uh, when, you, when, you put, uh, when you take the decision of the rings? The, I, 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 do not, uh, I, I don't have any, any uh, um, when I, I look to the, to, the, to the thickness in the five millimeters and I tell to the patient, I will try to improve your case. Yes. And I do not give you any, uh, any uh, um, uh, guarantee about the results. And I was astonished in uh, some cases with some scars. Yeah. Even with some scars, uh, with the, uh, and I had some, some, some visual acuities after uh, the surgery with 0 0.7, 0 0.9. So there is no rule, there is not cut, cut off point. Uh, uh, when you have a nipple cone and when you have a uh, clear cornea and I give importance to the potential visual acuity uh, before implanting the rings I put a contact a rigid or a scleral contact lens to see if the eye is not amblyop if there is another disease if I put a contact uh, a rigid or a, uh, or a scleral contact lens and the, the visual acuity it does not improve. So there is uh, no reason to put a ring.
there is no reason to 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 have surgery in these cases. Uh, but when you have a good potential vi visual acuity with a contact lens, it it shows that the uh, we have a lot of high order abrasions that we can reduce with the the with the the, the rings, not to to. To uh, erase, we cannot erase all the high order abrasions. We will still have a kerat keratoconic cornea, but with uh, 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 low uh, uh, high high order high order abrasions. Okay, perfect. Thank you. But uh, to 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 complete the 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 all points of this issue, when you have uh, such patient with high sphere and high cylinder, you have to correct the cornea first. Don't mm -hmm. think in the ICL. If yes. it's this patient had a good vision with the contact lens, uh, with, uh, with the type of the contact lens, don't put ICL in such patient without correction of the cornea first, right? Uh, it depends. Uh, in these cases, uh, I take the three, three visual acuities. I take the unaided uh, visual acuity. I take the best corrected visual acuity with, uh, with, the, with the glasses. Then I measure the, 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 the visual acuity, the potential visual acuity with contact with the uh, rigid contact lens. And with these uh, three visual acuities, I can decide. If the patient is, uh, is blind uh, and aided, and with, when you put glass, uh, you have uh, 0.6. So even if the patient has uh, had aberrations, if you put a fake AOL, and you will take him from nothing to 0.6, he will be happy. But, but when we have the difference between an aided uh, visual acuity and the best corrected visual acuity, you, you go from nothing to 0.1. But when we put the contact lens, you go to 0.8, it means that the, the rate, uh, uh, the, 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 the problem of these patients is high uh, uh, order abrasions, and we cannot correct it with fake AOL, and you have to go through uh, 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 intraocular rings. And using the actual lens, uh, I can see if I, I will, I will uh, need um, a sequential uh, uh, treatment. I mean, uh, if I have a, a very uh, high uh, the axial lens, I will regularize the cornea, and then I will tell the patient that in a, a second time, I will maybe need uh, 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 a fake uh, AOI. Okay, uh, great. Thank you very much uh, for this uh, uh, very, very rich uh, information and, and presentation about the, the diagnosis and management of cryoconus. Uh, you, you know that we plan to, to talk about the second part beyond the pentacam, which is the corneal biomechanics, but for, because we, we talk all the time uh, in the epithelial mapping, so we may arrange for another meeting, maybe the coming week, we will talk about the corneal biomechanical properties and its importance. Because as, we, as, as I said at the start, we have to know how to judge the patient, the suspected patient with the pentacam, because the pentacam is not always the, the only helpful one to diagnose the coronavirus, especially the early cases or suspected cases. The epithelial mapping is a very great clue for that. Also the coronavirus biomechanics, and both of them uh, will be, uh, will, will be uh, uh, very supportive and very helpful in judging the patient if candidate or not candidate, if coronavirus or not coronavirus, and so. So uh, let's arrange again for the coming weeks, maybe the next week or the, the, the week after, to talk about the coronal biomechanics. And I may invite the, uh, one of the, the leaders of the coronal biomechanical studying uh, with uh, the professor, Rufai, Dr. Yassi. Dr. Yassi, we may, we may invite the uh, professor Ambrosio. Uh, and Professor Cynthia, Cynthia Roberts, I think you know her? Cynthia Roberts, yes. Yeah, Cynthia Roberts is a, a, a medical engineer and eye doctor at the same time. She is a professor of ophthalmology and visual science in, the, um, in some university in the United States, I may, maybe Ohio, Ohio University. 
and she is a professor of the medical engineering. So she is working all the time on on this point, the cornea biomechanical studies. So we may uh, need to hear from from her about this issue. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yasser, for your time and for your knowledge. Thank you very much um, for helping us to know uh, the, uh, about the, the new new tools. And thank you, thank you for much. the whole audience, my, our professors and, and uh, my professors and my dear colleagues. And I hope that our meeting is, um, is still funny, uh, uh, guiding, and attractive for all of you. Uh, thank you and see you again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank uh, you.